All right, and welcome back to Turd Ferga Vision. So, anyway, this video is the second in a series of videos, just kind of doing a review on rotational motion. And so this one can be like video number two in the series. And the first thing you should kind of notice as we look at this problem, this first problem I want to work, it's not even a rotational motion question, but I want to do it for a reason, to show that if you can work this problem, then you are more than able to do rotational motion problems. So check it out. In getting ready to slam dunk a basketball, a basketball player starts from rest. And what is the significance of starting from rest? Why is this basketball player starting from rest? Well, that's telling us what? That's telling us that our velocity initial is zero meters per second. So we understand this, and it says he reaches a speed of 8.3 meters per second. So there's our velocity final in 1.7 seconds. And so there is our time. Assuming the player accelerates uniformly, determine the distance that he is able to run. So we're trying to figure out the distance that this guy runs. Well, what's interesting is this, and there's several ways we could approach this, but this is actually a really easy problem because if you remember something, we know that velocity, average velocity, is basically what? It's basically a distance over a time. Well, but if you look, we weren't given an average velocity. We were given like this. Well, we got, we were given an initial and we were given a final velocity. Well, remember something. Average velocity is also nothing more than your initial and final velocities added up divided by two. So if we take a look, what is the average velocity? Well, what is the average of 8.3 and zero. So we know that the average velocity is 4.15 meters per second. Now look at how easy this problem is. We know our average linear velocity. So if our average linear velocity is 4.15 meters per second, what is our displacement? How far does he run in a time of 1.7 seconds? And we know that all we have to do is multiply and get a product of that. I think by this point in physics, you should be capable of multiplying. So let's move down now. So let's look at this problem. A machine part rotates at an angular speed of 0.54 radians per second. Now, something that's very nice about this, so this has given us an initial velocity, omega O. Now, what is convenient about this problem, it did go ahead and it gave us rads per second. So the good thing about this problem is we don't have to do any conversions. The most common thing in rotational motion problems, they will give you like something rotates at 20 revs per minute. And if it does that, you've got to convert to rads per second before you go any further. So anyway, this problem's being nice. So it's given us an initial velocity. And now it says its speed is then increased to 3.2 rads per second. Well, that is a final angular velocity. And now it says at an angular acceleration. Now notice, angular acceleration. So this is not an A, not a linear acceleration. But this is, we'll use the Greek, an alpha that it's actually given us. Find the angle, and all it says is angle, but this is saying the angular displacement. And so find the angle that this object rotates through. Well, if you remember last video, we talked about every for every equation you had in your linear world, you had an equivalent in circle world. So... Our linear, our rotational equations look like this. So there's our acceleration equation. We've got a position time equation for acceleration, rotational kinematics. And then, if you notice, there is no time given in this problem. So if you remember, there's something known as a timeless equation. Well, 
it also exists in rotational motion. And so we can quite easily use this timeless equation to solve this problem. So we'll use this third kinematic. Angular velocity final equals omega O squared plus 2 alpha theta to solve this problem. And so all I'm going to do is plug in here. And for those of you that are the unit police, you'll have to forgive me. I'm not going to use my units because I don't want to ugly this thing up. So 0.54, speaking of which, there will be someone critical of me who will say, you didn't put a zero there. Yeah, no. Then third for I can do what I want. Two times our acceleration, what, 0.61, oops, 0.61 rads per second square. And there's our theta. So now we can go through and see if I can get my calculator out. Give me my calculator. And so, as we work this problem, 3.2 square minus 0.54 square equals 9.9484 divided by the product of 2 times 0.61. And bam. So our problem is 24,871 over 3,050. Well, that's not very convenient. I prefer this. 8.15 radians. Now, just out of curiosity, we know that one trip around a circle is 2 pi radians. So just out of curiosity, could you calculate how many revolutions or rotations this was? Well, yeah, that would be an easy conversion. If you were asked to find that, all you would have to do is divide by 2 pi rads, and that would be your quick and easy conversion to get over. As soon as I get my calculator back. So we could take that, divide by... To, hey, do I have a pi button? Divide by 2 pi. 1 point, let's just say 1.3. 1.3 revs. So we know it in both terms of units up here. So anyway, there's a first simple problem. So thanks for watching. Later.